Sean from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Okay, a uh, complaint on this machine is that it was uh, making a weird noise banging around. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up the lid first, just check the drum, make sure nothing feels loose or anything like that. But, so just raise the lid up and I'm just going to reach inside and just give it a spin. Yeah, the direction that seems fine. I don't see anything here in the uh, the bottom of the tub. The suspension appears to be intact. The suspension here, there's four po rods with springs in each of the corners that support the tub. Typically, if one is broken, the tub is going to sit really crooked. So we'll just kind of push down just to make sure that the suspension is still there, which it appears to be. Uh, so visually, everything seems fine. We're going to close it up. And I'm going to put the unit into a test mode, so that way it goes through all the functions of the machine and I can see what it does. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and put this in the test mode. To do so, uh, we're going to go to the left once, to the right three times, one, two, three, left once, then back to the right. You see all the lights down here are flashing. So now I'm going to turn the knob two times to the clockwise, one, two. See, spin is illuminated. Over here, number two is on. This is a higher-end model. It actually has a numerical display here, so it's a little easier to find your test modes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button. Locks the lid, and right now it's going to go through all the functions of the machine. Now, we may not get a full spin out of it in here. It may just start to spin. So uh, if we notice that maybe there's an issue with that, we'll have to go into maybe the manual test mode in order to make it spin for a longer period of time. Now, our, uh, if you can't remember the, the code and how to get in there, on this particular machine, the paperwork is going to be located inside the front panel. In order to access this one, though, there are three screws that you have to take off the back, of the uh, right below the control panel, and then the whole top will slide forward and lift up, and then you can reach down there and get the paperwork. All right, so we're still continuing our test mode here uh, shortly. It's going to try to agitate, so a lot of times you hear a faint click, which I just heard and I talked over, so I ruined it for you. Um, and then you should hear the machine start to agitate. Now it's draining the water out, and then here, we'll, after it's done draining, we'll hear another faint click. Uh, possibly if the pump's on we probably won't hear it and then it'll go ahead and start like the uh, spins uh, portion of the cycle. There it just clicked to engage into the spin uh, by our uh, shift, mode shifter, actuator, however you want to call it. Starting the spin cycle right now. So obviously it doesn't get into a full high spin, it just starts it. Now if there were any errors um, on here, this red lid lock, it's going to stop and it's going to flash for almost any problem that it has. And then it's your job to decipher which of the multitude of errors that it has is giving you that lid lock. Because almost every problem it has ends in the same failure code on, on the machine. All right, so right now we're waiting for it to finish. So it completed the, uh, the whole test cycle with the little song there, and then you can see it says done. If there would have been a problem where it didn't finish it, the red lid lock light here would flash. So we know that it was able to complete it. Now, what I've been told from Whirlpool is there could still be an error. When you run it through a test mode, it just bypasses any kind of major problem that could be there, and it just... Uh, turns on the part that it's supposed to for that part of the test mode. So you're not, we're not out of the woods quite yet. So I'm going to put it into a manual test mode uh, just so I can get it into a spin a little bit longer. Uh, and then uh, we'll see how that happens. It works from there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put it in the manual test mode. That way I can focus on the spin, which is typically where you're going to hear most of the noise or banging if something were to go off balance. So I'm going to put the unit into the test mode again. So we're going to go left, right, 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 left, right. We're all flashing. I'm going to turn it. There's one, two, and then there's three. So we have spin and done here. 
which will be on most models you'll see. It won't have this over here. It'll only be here. And there's a, in the paperwork, it tells you what each one stands for. So we're at three, we're gonna hit start. So we're at zero, zero over here on this one. On the other ones, it won't see it. Nothing will be illuminated. We wanna lock the lid so we can make it spin. So you press that when it's in the zero, zero, or it's empty. So the lid is locked, can't open it up. So now we're gonna advance through. Now I'm not exactly sure which number I'm looking for to make it spin. So we're going to try a couple different things and until we can get it to go into the spin cycle. Now I know it's not in the beginning because that's when it fills with water. So I just advanced. Right now I'm on number four. And you can see each one of these, each time I turn this, they, it's basically a different number that way. So we're going to hit start. When it flashes like it did just there, it means that that test number isn't used. So that's no good for us. So we're going to hit five. We're filling with water. We don't need that to happen. Let's make it spin, so I'm going to pause it. We're going to go to six. It flashes at me, so that one's not used. Seven. It's draining out right now. So we, in order to make it spin, we have to have the water removed anyway, so I'm going to make sure all the water I just put in there is removed. And by the sound of the pump right now, I can tell that the tub is as empty as it's going to get. We're going to pause it. We're going to go to eight. Not used. Nine. All right, right now it's spinning again. It didn't have to change, we didn't have to listen for the click because it was already in the spin cycle from the last test we used. And uh, uh, <coughs> depending on your model, some of them will have a slow spin, which this is in here. Occasionally you'll get lucky in the software and there allows it to go into a high spin, just depending on manufacturing. So everything sounds fine to me right here. I'm going to pause it. Now before I can advance it, I have to wait for the tub to come to a complete stop. So this here will take a minute or two uh, for that to happen. And then once it's completely done, we can try to advance and start the next spin. I'm pretty sure the tub is at a complete stop at this point. So we're going to go ahead and try the next test cycle. Advance it to, to the next one. To the, uh, the display changes and back to number 10 now. So here it is. We're spinning. This should be a high spin. So if it was an issue, during the spin cycle, we should be able to find something banging around or going off balance at this point here. And in my opinion, everything seems to be functioning as it should. Um, so <clears throat> I believe for this instance here, maybe the, uh, the unit was, was either overloaded or underloaded, or maybe they had uh, some items in there that one uh, absorbed a lot of water to make it very heavy, whereas maybe some, some, some lighter items that didn't have as much water in it to allow the machine to go off balance. Um, so <clears throat> what we're here is just basically we'll just educate the customer on how this machine's different, explain to them the water level differences and how it washes, and just have them monitor it because currently we can't find a problem. Uh, also, what we're going to do here, just to make sure everything's uh, stuff up to uh, speed, Anytime you mess with a replace a drive system or a computer uh, component, they want you to run a calibration cycle. So just to make sure that that's right, we'll go after we're done with this test cycle here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll put it into a calibration cycle. I want to go ahead and uh, uh, stop the, the test cycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where this is a zero so I can unlock the lid. Because sometimes if you don't unlock it, then, then you'll have to go back in the test mode to unlock it because the machine won't unlock itself. So we're going to just go back all the way to our starting point here where it's zero. Hit the start button. Now our lid's unlocked. So that I can you know, go ahead and cancel this test mode because we need to get into a different part of the test cycle there. So we're going to go ahead and restart our test mode to get to the calibration cycle. So we're going to go left, right, 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 left, right. Once again, we're blinking here. We're going to go ahead and move it into test four. The rinse button here is illuminated. This is the calibration cycle. We're going to hit start. And you see how this is running across here. And it's a couple minute cycle. It'll vary by machine. And what it's doing is it's just kind of syncing the drive system and our, and our computer components together. And just make sure that everything is in the proper setting. So, uh, there's nothing we do to change it. This is all automatic. And like our first test we ran, 
when it's done, uh, it, it, I think it makes another little jingle at you, and then uh, the done light comes up and then it will unlock itself. The second test we did, it was manual, so that's why we had to go in and unlock it, so that way we could open the lid and get inside of there. And we just finished, there was no song on this one, but it did uh, unlock the lid, so now we can uh, fully open the lid again. So we just calibrated the unit, we ran it through all test cycles, could not find a problem with the machine. Um, so um, at this point here, we'll just instruct the customer uh, that possibly it was overloaded or underloaded or something of that nature. All right, uh, what, what I'm going to use to help explain the, the issue to the customer, they have this image here. This is the, the, the model now. It's a high-efficiency product. shows you how much water it fills up with the wash. Not very much. And it has over here the old style, where it fills up almost the whole tub with water. So it's very easy to overload this machine. Um, and that's why we're gonna, since we couldn't find anything wrong, that's, that's, you know, we're gonna try to explain that to our customer. Thank you for watching another quality in-home diagnostic video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.